Hello class, today we're going to be taking notes on living things. What makes something living versus not living? We have a way to categorize this. There are six characteristics and we'll go more in detail with this throughout the rest of this video. The first one is that all living things use energy. They also grow and develop, reproduce, respond to stimulus, or stimulus means change. Organisms are made of cells and that these cells are organized. Organisms need energy to survive. So when we say that a living thing uses energy, they use that energy in order to do everything that they need in order to survive. So for example, plants need sunlight. Animals need to eat so that they can grow. Bacteria eats food and they help in the decomposition of that food, but they use that in order to live. Living organisms need to get energy in order to grow and to develop. All living organisms grow and develop. An organism will grow in size and or they may develop into an adult even if they don't look like they get bigger. For example, here we have a seed that grows into a tree. Or we also have a duckling right here that will eventually become a parent, an adult that looks like this right here. The third characteristic that makes an organism living is that they are able to reproduce. When an organism is mature after it's developed, it forms new organisms. For example, a human adult will create a child. There are two different kinds of reproduction and they are known as sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. With sexual reproduction, we have two parents that are sharing genetic material. For example, animals like humans, there is a female and a male, and they share their genetic material to make a child that is a mixture of both of their genes. With asexual reproduction, only one parent is involved you do not have to have two or more parents. For example, we have bacteria and some plants and some fungi. You don't have to draw this, but I just wanted to show you that with sexual reproduction, here we have the female and they give an egg and the male gives their sperm and inside each of these, we have genetic material from the mom and genetic material from the father and they help to create a zygote which then will create the embryo and that's how you were born. With plants this is also in occurrence. Plants can share their genetic material to create a different offspring. So here we have one plant who is sharing their pollen with another plant and likewise this plant is sharing their pollen with this plant over here and so we get this cross-pollination and you get new seeds and a different kind of plant. Same species, but just genetically a little different. With asexual reproduction, remember this is where you only need one parent. And for example, here we have one bacteria that is just duplicating its own DNA and splitting into two babies. So it's just creating clones of itself. The same happens here with the, uh, the fungi. So for example, uh, we have mushrooms, right? And what happens is the mushroom gives off these spores that then grow into more of the same exact replication of itself. So it's a duplicate, it's like little clones. And then they grow into adults that then give off more spores and it's this cycle of replication of the same exact kind of fungi. Over here we have yeast, which is a microorganism. And the way that they grow is that they just grow parts off of its own body and then it splits off and becomes another, another organism. But it is the same exact genetic material as the original parent. A fourth characteristic that makes all organisms living is that it can respond to a stimulus. And a stimulus is just a change, something that occurs that is different from the normal. Here we have um, a diver who is not a normal part of the ocean life and when the octopus notices that there is this other organism inside of the water that it's not 
sure what it is, it gets scared and it sprays this ink in response. Another example is bunny rabbits or many different animals actually. When an animal senses and smells food, when they smell these carrots or any other food, they will go towards it. So they go towards the food. Here we have a little roly-poly, a little insect, and if you were to touch this insect with your finger, it would roll up in response to that stimulus. So the stimulus was touch. Another example of a stimulus is with a bat. We know that bats like to be out at night, and so while this bat is flying around at night doing its bat things, when the sun comes out, it notices the sun and it makes the bat go into its cave or back home and go to sleep. Whereas at night, we go to sleep. So when it gets very dark, we get tired. And that's just the way that we're made. We respond to the stimulus. All living organisms are made of cells. These cells are the basic building blocks of an organism. And the sixth thing is that our cells are organized. So cells create tissues, and then tissues become organs. And organs are part of a larger system, and then the organ system gets together with other systems and creates an organism. For example, here we have animal cells, and there's different kinds of cells that exist, and uh, this is just one of them. So here we have a muscle cell, and when we have many muscle cells together, it creates a tissue, and this is muscle tissue. And then this muscle tissue can create this organ here called the heart, and then this heart is a part of a larger system, and this is the circulatory system or the cardiovascular system. And then this system works in congruence with many other systems in order to create a whole organism. With plants, we have plant cells that create tissues that then creates, for example, a leaf, which is an organ. And then the organ can become part of an organ system, such as the leaf with the branches and the stems. And then these branches and stems, this whole organ system, matches up with the roots and then creates the entire organism. So this is the end of our T-notes. And this was just an introduction to what makes organisms living versus non-living. Please make sure you understand everything. And if not, review the notes and review the video and be ready to use this information in class. Have a great day.